The objective of the National Ewe Hoggett competition is to recognise the sheep flocks that are more productive and profitable than others in their class. 2016 was the 20th year of the competition, with 11 finalists and over 250 flocks of sheep judged. Willie and Philippa Menlove took out the Perindale breed, the large flock and the phenotype awards, as well as the overall national title. The Perindale sheep fit well into what is a diverse farming operation. We're ranging from river flats to undeveloped hill. We've got 780 hectares of cultivatable land. We've lifted that from about 280 20 years ago. That's been a big change. We're running 5,300 ewes, 1,300 hoggets, 650 hinds and their progeny, and 130 cows with their progeny. Swings and roundabouts, when one's up, the other one can be down. So it also, there's only Carl and I work here, so um, 11,000 stock units for two people. Uh, if we didn't have that uh, variety of stock, there's no way we'd be able to do it. So it spreads our workload. Carl Slosher is stock manager. He's been with me for 18 months. And then um, I've got two boys here at home for the holidays. They're my casual workforce. So Sam and Elliot are um, helping us out quite nicely. We're into our last day of weaning today. We've uh, weaned ewe lambs and the light lambs, left them at the top of the hill. And we've brought the ewes and the works and second cut of lambs down. We've got a line at 34 to 35 and a half for the Alliance draft to put his hand over. And then we've got a line between 30 and 33 k's that are going to loose soon. I probably have a target in the back of my mind that we'd like to hit 18 k's every year as an average. And we sit around that. Most years we sneak just over top. This has been a really challenging year, cold from November. We've had a bit of rain, but just been cold. Lambs, compared to last year, the ones we weaned before Christmas were four kilos lighter than the year before. That makes a hell of a difference, you know, that, it's a lot of small lambs on the, on the property, but um, luckily enough, we had a wee bit of feed in front of them. Um, last year, we had good lambs, no clover, so it swings and roundabouts, isn't it? We're looking for a medium-sized sheep that's free-moving and can look after itself. So there's no lambing. They've got to be uh, a robust sheep, good back end, bit of length so we can hang some meat on carcasses. We stay away from tight and fine wool, mainly because they're hard to dry in the winter for shearing and we're getting more prevalence of the Aussie fly striking on the back. So if we can look after that wool quality, hopefully some of those problems are negated. We try not to do our final selection right through into April to give them all an opportunity to present what they can do for us. But we grow them as quick as we can. Size early on is important. You know, kilos before Christmas is a key. We tried hogget mating for five, six years. If we boil it right down, we weren't very good at it. We were only running one cycle. We were trying to uh, um, tie in hogget mating with the growth curve of lucerne and we were finding that to be very tricky. Uh, main reason, we were trying to put the hoggets on the lucerne to grow the hogget out well and still get a good lamb and utilise the lucerne in the spring. What we were finding is with having that lucerne tied up and eaten in December, we were struggling to look for lamb feed at that first weaning. So we decided to do away with the hogget, hogget mating, cut the first cut for baleage and feed to calves in the winter and have that lucerne ready for my first, first cut of weaning off that mixed stage. It was very controversial, but you've got to look at your whole system. On its own, yes, we probably should be doing it, but when we look at everything else we've got going on, we don't lamb any other ewes, so why do we want to spend time doing that? when we can either be having a break or doing something else. We've been able to concentrate on feeding finishing stock and the replacement stock rather than sacrificing one for the other. We get some of the Perindales and all the South Suffolk Texel rams from uh, Elliot King at Pahiwi Stud at Belfer and then the majority of the Perindale rams are coming from Pip Wilson and her Montana Stud. They're both really good stockmen and I've got total trust in what those guys do. We look at the structure of, it, of the rams first and then, then we look at, look at the records and, and see if they, they stack up against what, what we're seeing. So we're looking for sound feet, 
good RC end. F not fine in the shoulders, but not big in the shoulders. Good fleece of wool and just a, a decent bulge sheet. Everything's twins from twins. Uh, that's an important side of the Perindales. The eye muscle on the black face is important. Growth's more important though. Fast growing is a key. Now we've got the farm improved, we can actually exploit the genetics. So there was no point spending money on genetics when we couldn't exploit it. The Hoggett Awards, we've probably been in the local competition for 10 years. Uh, we've been lucky enough to get through to the national competition three times. And we're very lucky for that because we've never actually won the Perindale section out of Southland, uh, West Otago. Through to the national finals three times, 2011, 2015 and then 2016. Yeah, we're pretty excited or surprised to be fair to uh, win the whole thing. We'd aimed, we really want to win that Perindale section and uh, I would have been happy with that. So yeah, when the came, night came in Invercargo I was uh, a bit dumbfounded to be fair, yeah. The big thing we're getting out of it is we've improved our stock. So it's not necessarily the award, it's by concentrating on the hoggets and making sure we're growing them out well, we're getting better stock. So that's the big buzz. And when you've got good stock, farming's easier and it's more fun. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.